Common foot and ankle tendon transfers. Tendon transfers in the foot and ankle is complicated. The joints must be flexible and the muscle strength should be grade 4 or more for a tendon transfer to achieve its effect. Here is the mnemonic to remember the structures at the medial side of the ankle. Tom, Dick and Harry. This mnemonic contains the muscles that are the horsepower for tendon transfer in the foot and the ankle. This mnemonic corresponds to tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus, posterior tibial artery and tibial nerve, and flexor hallucis longus. So how can we use these tendons? These three muscles, the flexor hallucis longus, the flexor digitorum longus, and the tibialis posterior are very important tendons that can be used for tendon transfers. The flexor hallucis longus transfer can be used if there is a chronic defect that result from an Achilles tendon tear and the gap is 5 cm or more, then you transfer the flexor hallucis longus. The flexor hallucis longus is next to the Achilles tendon, so you just transfer that. The same concept with the tibialis posterior tear, stage 2, which means it's flexible. It is treated with tendon transfer, the one next to it, which is the flexor digitorum longus. You must add bony realignment procedure, such as medial calcaneal displacement osteotomy. Lateral column lengthening is also done if there is excessive forefoot abduction. The perineal tendons. When there is chronic tear of both tendons, you will transfer the flexor hallucis longus when both tendons are involved. Or you can treat it by tenodesis to the healthy tendon if one tendon is involved. In flexible hammer and claw toes, you will use the girdle stone procedure, which is flexor to extensor of the lesser toes. Charcot Marie Tooth Disease In Charcot Marie Tooth Disease, the patient will have varus of the hind foot, cavus, and plantar flexion of the first metatarsal. When the deformity of the foot is flexible, you will do soft tissue procedure. You will transfer the pronaeus longus to the pronaeus pravus. This will eliminate the strong plantar flexion of the first tray and improves the aversion power of the perineus pravus. Transfer of the tibialis posterior to the dorsum of the foot through the interosseous membrane will decrease the varus movement and it will assist in ankle dorsiflexion. In a patient with CVA and traumatic brain injury, the equinovarus foot is the most common deficit following stroke, and this occurs due to overactivity of the tibialis anterior. The condition can be treated with a split tibialis anterior tendon transfer, SPLAT, S-P-L-A-T-T, -T, combined with Achilles tendon lengthening or gastrocnemius recession. The deformity have to be flexible. Perineal nerve palsy, foot drop, posterior tibial tendon transfer through the interosseous membrane to the dorsum of the foot. In Chupart hind foot amputation, which is partial foot amputation through the calcaneal cuboid and the telonavicular joint, we will transfer the tibialis anterior to the neck of the talus and lengthening of the Achilles tendon to avoid equinus deformity of the hind foot. In club foot dynamic spination deformity, 
in the swing phase can occur following Panacetti casting for a club foot. That occurs due to the overpull of the tibialis anterior, and that is treated with tibialis anterior tendon transfer to the lateral cuneiform. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.